James, you do know we're not doing talking about porridge. Oh, it's ribbons. Oh, it's my my homage to cribbins. Bless it's not a Fletcher. And there was no. me thinking you'd have your big helmet on display. Oh, achavi. True though. <laughs> Welcome to Talking About. It is another Talking About at the movie. So I've got pick and mix this time. Oh. It's all about the props. Just <laughs> actually, look, look, I'm telling you, look, I, could, I, I don't want to do a Jason here and start chewing, a, chewing on a. <clears throat> oh, pop, sod it. I'm going to do it and I'm going to keep oh. talking with him. Yeah. Uh, lovely teeth, so I don't mind. I can chew you, through that. You'd be okay. I'd be half an hour chewing the thing. I'm, I'm good at a quick chew and swallow. So anyway, like us, subscribe to us, notify us, all that sort of stuff. I am Paul or Pival, and I am going to have a little chew because I'm joined by. Yeah, I know it's James. And hello, it's Jason. And off it went. Um, so. Previously, when we watched Doctor Who and the Daleks, we scored it 20, which is very credible. Um, today, we are looking at Daleks Invasion Earth 2150 AD. I mean, I'm starting to wonder whether I should just talk like Bane all the time. I don't know. <laughs> if I did all the reviews like this, does it add something to them? <laughs> I don't know. It might be a bit more specialist. Your only, your um, only fans might take a hit here on this. <laughs> <laughs> take a hit, as in like, oh, good. like, it, like it, you know, could it could you could use this voice on? Well, I think I don't use that voice on there. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, who has an introduction for us this week? Jason, I'm going to hand over to you. Oh, how very kind of you, James. Thank you very much. And here we are, Daleks. Ignore the um, uh, the apostrophe here. Invasion Earth 2150 AD. And uh, we're back with um, Doctor Who. Uh, and we're in London for a cinematic remake of Daleks Invasion of Earth. Good, isn't it? Um, and this picks up and follows the narrative of the second television Dalek story. And yet again, I think glorious Technicolor Daleks, um, especially in the vicinity of Sloan Square in London, is a great way to, to effectively bring them back for a second um, cinematic outing. Um, you've got... Uh, Really, really quite a punchy start to this one. Some fantastic music. Um, I love the music in this one. The, the theme tune to this one is a little bit better than in the first movie, um, but I love the theme tune to this one. And then you're into the nuts and bolts of um, tracking down the, the mine in Bedfordshire um, where the Daleks plan can be foiled once again um, by Doctor Who and um, Susie Who. Um, it, I, I like this one. Um, it's again just a nice piece of um, cinematic fluff that you don't really have to think too hard about. It condenses a six-part story once again down into um, cinematic-esque release time. Um, yeah, again, I, I like this. It's, um, it's some ambition in this one. Um, the uh, the filming on on the lot. It, it appreciate it's not London, um, but I love the movie sequences with the Dalek saucer. And um, actually just uh, just being on in London, I think just adds that little bit extra to the film. So for me, I kind of like this one. Ooh. It's it's very, whereas the first one was like, you know, family day trip and then they come up against the, the Daleks. This has got a real sort of post-apocalyptic feel to it once they, once they get sort of going. I mean, you've got that, that sequence at the beginning where uh, Bernard Cribbins as Tom is is sort of attacked while he's trying to foil a robbery. Stumbles into the TARDIS while they're that, sorry not the TARDIS. They he stumbles into TARDIS, 
um you know and immediately they're like oh well you might as well come along as well and they're, they're off and then they land on this you know uh like i say <sighs> decimated london you've got a uh, brilliant shot where the dalek comes out of the water which i know they, they did previously but it, it's, it's really nice uh, aesthetic to it the robo men as well um this time around no barbara assuming she might have gone off of ian you never know we we, we, were, we were never we were never sure how they clicked in the last movie she might be with another boyfriend as susan would say they might um, have stayed with the romans you never know she might have <laughs> she might have stayed with them. she might have stayed with them uh this time we've got the niece <laughs> <laughs> the niece of Doctor Who, uh, Louisa. There's a there's a lot of missing family members. Well, Sam, Sammy's Doctor Who's got a brother who, or a sister who. I, I'm guessing that would be Sid James. <laughs> well, it's certainly not going to be Kenneth Williams, is it? <laughs> I don't care. Imagine the spin-off then with 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 Jill as the the ch child of. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, it's 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 that's not yeah. thinking about it. So you see so you get a slightly different dynamic. And, and we were talking about this on the last one because you were saying about how Barbara doesn't seem to sort of get doesn't really sort of uh shine. And and in this there's there's quite a lot of splitting them up into to pairs as well because they all sort of end up being separated and going their own way to to the mine at the end um there are some notable changes to the story i'm sure we will come along though uh, as, as we go through it in a little bit more detail but you know they've like you say they've, they've cut it down they've they've shortened it to to allow to get to the big climactic end um that being said, you know, the, the budget on this one is bigger. It's still glorious Technicolor. Um, I love the Dalek ship. Uh, you know, the Dalek ship is, is beautiful. But going back to what we talked about in the last recording of the 4K, unfortunately now the 4K, you can really see the wires, which I, 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 I don't remember seeing previously. Um, it, don't get me wrong; it's still beautiful. I, I still think that 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 ship is is wonderful. But there are points now, particularly at the end, when the you know the, 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 it's hovering in midair and then it starts to crash. You can really see the wires holding it up, which is which is a shame. Um, but it, you know, there is some there is some really nice work that goes on um, in this. I think. You know, some of the exterior sets are, are really good. You know, um, you've got the the big sign for Sugar Puffs because it was sponsored by Sugar Puffs. It's like it's a really good uh, plug. You know, the rest of London is decimated, but the Sugar Puffs uh, sign manages to stay uh, intact. Um, maybe a little bit less good when you're in the ship. Maybe when you're sort of you know running down endless cor corridors, but it it's got that big movie budget feel to it. Well, Jason was going to say something then. It was like that, that moment. I was like, no, he's not. <laughs> well, I was, going, I was going to mention, actually, you're right about the scenes on the ship, although it is endless corridors, but there is that fantastic um, skit with the, the, the food dispensing machine um, and the whole sort of... Um, eating choreographically eating the sweets which is all the food yeah. which is kind of quite quite amusing um again there to um there to uh give uh, our very our very own bernard a, a bit of a comedy skit a bit not unlike roy castle's appearance in the first film and you oh, why didn't they straighten that blinking helmet on the one guy at the front <laughs> it drives me crazy oh. it's just sort of slightly to the sign it's like oh did nobody say hang on hang on just for a week should we go, go for the, just straighten that up mate um, the, the sauce, I love the sauce, I agree with you. It's really, really weird though, seeing it, because uh, I didn't, I did the Blu-ray version of the 4K, which is still, you know, the same clean up job and all that. But there is that kind of stab thing of, oh, you can't, this is the first time I've really seen 
mm. all the black strings <laughs> holding up the saucer. And it did make me feel a bit kind of like, oh, because because obviously within how it's previously formatted, we've never had that show up like that. Maybe a couple of in moments, but not the full. Every time the saucer's on, you can see it hanging. Um, we saw a film on the horror channel, whatever the horror channel's called now, called The Body Stealers. And the, they cut to, to the ship has landed out and it's the Dalek movie ship. I was like, ah, they've reused the prop because it's quite obvious at the end when there's a massive explosion that they don't, <laughs> they don't ruin that prop. Yeah. Yeah. That, that model is out and ready to be reused, you know, yeah. at a later date. But yeah, it's quite funny to see it to turn up in the, the story. I think there's quite a few bits of propage and sort of scenery that that's made made its way back to TV Doctor Who. There is different lots formats. Of, lots, of, lots of panels and lots of, <coughs> of, of, of and the, particularly the rel counter um, that seems to crop up between. Um, in fact, that turns up in a lot of a lot of um, a lot of 60s television in general. Um, it, it appears to be. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, it, was the, it was the first rel. It was the first, this was this was the, the start of the realms. But you say about the 4K restoration showing up the strings, you're absolutely right, and you're right. I think this is the film, it doesn't show up quite as much in the first movie because um, I think the city sets, yeah, it's quite it's quite well designed. This time around, they've a lot to do on the budget with the various, the various um, sort of soundstage stuff that they've got to do and what have you but you can really see the imperfections in this movie where the Dalek props are just that little bit more beaten up in this movie rather than the pristine props that they were in the first movie and um, there's a scene in the control room um, there's two scenes in the control room that stand out that you can really tell the difference in, in, when, in the restored version firstly the gold the gold Dalek has a big massive handprint on, on the dome of the Dalek that shows up massively on 4K. Um, and then you've got that scene where the camera's tracking the Dalek coming down the, the ramp um, all the way down. And it's supposedly a steady cam, but the shake on the camera is unbelievable. And you really pick it up on the cleaned up version, which I hadn't picked up previously. You sort of also see the paint job on the Dalek bomb as well. It looks a bit more home baked, doesn't it? Than it, yeah. it used to look quite like a sort of plastic space thing, whereas now it looks a bit like they've got the, the emulsion on it to, to make it red. Um, I'd sort of come back to, to what James said about the 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 car, the, the, the regulars. We're going to call them the regulars. Um, I do think that, that, that Louise is, is a step down from Barbara, that she doesn't have an awful lot of anything to do in this. Mm. Um, which is interesting in some ways because Barbara's participation in the original TV thing is quite, quite big. I mean, she, she, I suppose some of her stuff is sort of pushed on to Susan because Susan goes off and, yeah. And, and yeah, there's sort of, there's a lot more restructuring goes on with, with, with this because I suppose it's, it's, it's adapting because they're not sending Susan off to get married to someone or something. You know, I suppose there's, there's the sort of points where you've got to, alter yeah. it there's a bit of an age difference in this one between between susan and david roberta's really... single was was the b-side was not too not too young not too old wasn't it awful wasn't that the b-side to who's who uh -huh. not so old not it's a very dubious title but yes anyway it would have been a bit weird at the end if she said oh uh, grandfather i'm staying with this man and getting married <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was more excited to find out that Andrew Keir was meant to be Andre Morel, but he couldn't do it because he was doing the massacre. <gasps> that's, that's unfortunate timing, isn't it? They're like, <laughs> darling, they've called you up. They'd love you to do a Doctor Who. And he's like, I'm, I'm, I'm doing Boy, one. I'm doing one. What are you on about? And they're like, oh, bugger. It's, it's the film, <laughs> so it's more money. But never mind, never mind. I'm sure they'll do another film. They'll do yeah. the chase. The massacre, but we're well remembered throughout the years. <laughs> We burn again next Tuesday. It's fine. Um, yeah, poor, poor. So you missed out because yeah, what are the chances? But yeah. this one, to go back to the context question that I sort of pose, this mm. comes. Up, uh, this is summer '66. So we've had the Dalek Christmas of James's favourite, the Daleks Master Plan. Wow. Um, so Dalek Mania has by this point they've they've had three months of Daleks on television. So whereas before it was like. We need Daleks. It's 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 this 
big gaps between these. Mm. We've now had a lot of Daleks, so, so, so it's less exciting for people to see it now, I suppose. It, yeah. it, it's interesting how quickly that, that zeitgeist has, has gone. And we're only three months, uh, my domain, my, my three months off Patrick Troughton and Power of the Daleks. So mm. New Doctor and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's interesting because the show itself, as we've discussed on our season three review, Rating wise, is is on a bit of a, a slide. So, so the sh- so the, the show is not overly popular right now, and the Daleks have sort of been possibly burnt out. So, in some ways, whilst this film, in my mind, is a lot better than the first one, it's got a lot more attack to it, it's a lot more brassy, a lot more confident. It's sort of doomed to fail because the circumstances aren't aren't there for it to be a hit now. No, and and weirdly mirroring. The TV series, Peter Cushing was taken ill while they were filming this. So parts of it had to be rewritten, reshot um, to give him less, less of a role and to, to make sure that he could uh, complete his commitments. But it, yeah, it, it's, you're right, because by the time they got to Power of the Daleks, that was the point where they were thinking of killing them off. All together, you know, that was when by the time we got to Troughton, they were like, right, we've we've kind of had enough of the Daleks. So this could have been a little bit too too much of an overload. But I, I think you're right. This is this film is a step up from the first one. It's got much more to it. You know, the, it's it's bigger in its budget, in its scope, in its models, in you know, in, in in all aspects of its storytelling as well. And it, 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 there are some omissions to the TV series. You don't have the uh, slither, you don't have going into the sewers and things like that. But essentially you still have, you know, the old woman betraying them. You still have the, you know, the dodgy dealer who betrays them. You still have those a- aspects mm. um, in, you know, in the story. But I, I think, when you get to the mine, for example, you know, this, the size of that and the, especially the sort of sequence at the end where they're escaping the mine, it looks really good and it, it's much more tense than the first one. Um, so, you know, a lot more action as well. I, I mean, you get Eileen Way and Sheila Stiefel in, in, in the yeah. woods. I mean, Sheila's dub, though, so, so that she doesn't sound <laughs> like Sheila, which is a bit strange. Um, I think my shoe and, and Philip Mad the Philip Maddock as, mm. as the sort of Spiv character before he, he did a Doctor Who as and in like a and TV. He, and he's quite he is quite he plays it in a very uh, he's underplaying evil but and 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 a bit cunning and a bit um a bit nasty, but he's doing it in his usual Philip Maddock's brilliant in anything he's in, and I kind of like I, I like his little portrayal in this. He's very sly, isn't he? Mm. Yeah, he, he's I mean, we know him from other other stories, but he is very sly, and um, you know, obviously he uh, he he betrays them. But he, 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 you just know when you see him on the screen, you're just like, ah. Oh. But I do I do agree about the ambition in this one. I think I said it at the top of the recording. The ambition is there, and they've obviously got a little bit more money, and they are trying different things. It's multi level filming, which you didn't have in the first film um and the whole way that they use the the whole london set and um having watched a little bit of behind the scenes on this the way they would go to different parts of the set and they'd be building different parts of the set as they were going it was obviously done in a bit of a rush um but there's an it's a there's more of an epic feel about this and i think it's a lot probably to do with the setting it's not an alien planet this one is it is earth and and it's london and you know the route to Bedfordshire, and he, he, again, I always think stories on Earth just bring it that little bit closer to home. Um, and and I think this one, my gut feel is that whilst Dalek Mania might have been on the the slide slightly, this still resonated well with the audiences back in the day. I think. I think it was a big hit at the box office, was it? Because because the, they spent mm-hmm. a lot more on it, and it didn't it didn't oh. didn't do what they hoped for. So the budget for this one was two hundred and eighty-six thousand. Wow! So up from one hundred and eighty for the first one. So, and you can see it. 
you can yeah you and and i mean obviously the sugar puffs endorsement and all that sort of stuff it's 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 there's there's a big ramp up on it no slither though. I mean, Nick Evans would have been there for this. He he could have he could have slithered on the big screen. I think we're a bit sad to be denied that. Um, and the other thing I'm going to say, which which just while it's in my head, Roberta's got the most beautiful, neat handwriting, hasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> I I love her handwriting on 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 the wall. I mean, that's preempting Isabel's. You can't lose a wall, isn't it? In the invasion, mm. can't lose a wall, but you can also keep you back to it and not see it if you work really hard in the staging. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it, there's, there's, there's a lot more kick and there's a lot more action in this. There's a lot a lot more action in this than the first one. You get you get a lot of Dalek and all that stuff because that's the excitement in the Daleks in colour. But like the sequences where um, Andrew Keir and Roberta drive through the Daleks, there's a lot of yeah. Daleks there that they drive through, but you know, it, it, it's all very exciting and and the, the Dalek ship, which 4K hasn't helped it, coming down to fire a gun and blow up the lorry and all that stuff. That's, that's just a lot more. And the, the, the saucer, it, the sort of rebellion on the saucer, I mean, compared, compared to what you have to do for the TV series to be able to do that in Riverside or whatever and just do it as like, to be able to shoot that and have all the bodies strewn and the fires and, and all the action that that, you know, that's incredible stuff. Yeah, this, including a, oh god, sorry. I was, gonna say, yeah, I was gonna say, including a stuntman that actually ha- manages to break his yeah. ankle whilst filming one of those scenes around the saucer ship, um, m- misplaces himself, falls falls down, still manages to drag himself along the ground to be exterminated, only then for him to pick it up a little bit later with him coming back from the hospital for the pickup shot. Um, they they were quite ambitious there, weren't they? They were, but I love that sequence. That's where they're fighting on the ship, and then mm. he 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 decides to make a run for it doesn't he and he goes up into the ruins and he's climbing along and then he sort of falls goes through that sort of um uh, what do you call it this is like a awning. awning awning yeah through the awning into the pile of rubble and that's obviously when he he, he was uh, injured and then gets exterminated it, 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 it just it's so like i say apocalyptic it's you know when they're ex- examining the house and they open the door and there's no floor there and he sort of almost falls falls through and uh you know it, it it's so different to the previous one where it was you had the forest but then you were in this brightly lit city for the you know for the for the, for the dialect so it's such a change of tone because the curse of the Dalek saucer, isn't it? Because Eddie Powell gets his injury through the awning on this. Yeah. And there was, Billy Hartnell was dropped, wasn't he, on the ramp in the TV show? Right, he was. Yeah. Yes. Um, curse Andrew of the saucer. Uh, hurt himself smashing the window to get into the vehicle as well. So he he had an injury um, on set, and there was a there was a badly timed explosion which also uh, affected someone so there was quite a few accidents on the set on this one no careers were ruined in the making of it though no <laughs> yeah anyway yeah mm. i'm trying to think of the, any other prescient things that i thought of when i was watching this um yeah. one thing that dexter points out is quite funny is when they're doing their little um gathering in the in the underground base Susan's painting a, a, a small pot. We're not quite sure what that's adding to the to, to, <laughs> to, to the rebellion. We better make sure all the plant pots are painted a sort of pastel blue. Daleks when Susan come in. Was that some sort of you know secret plot that we never got to know about? It was a bid mead master plan that was. <laughs> <laughs> the science of which we should never know. That uh, pot's probably popped up in several episodes and we never noticed it all, it all. Although we have to question why why PC Tom is dropped back at a point before he's... Yes, how, how he manages to get back when he's already there to, to stop it. A sticky wicket, it's a sticky... I mean, the first one had its dodgy Romans ending. This has the dodgy breaking the laws yeah. of time thing. I mean... This feels slightly less dodgy, though, I feel. <laughs> the, t- the Time Reapers were going to have to come out and, and, and fix the, the problem there, aren't they? <laughs> As Bernard <laughs> steps over himself to stop. <laughs> well, have Susie Who 
Louise Who and Doctor Who also waving them and then jumping into the road to stop them doing it before the, the Time Reapers can come in and, and, and do what they've got to do. That's all right. Brother Who has already sorted all of that. <laughs> Sid James was hanging out in the bar in the corner. <laughs> Uh, but, ah, oh, Bernard Cribbins. Oh. I mean, I, I know we had, in the last one, we had Roy Castle, who was the sort of main man opposite Peter and there for the comic relief as well. And, and again, you've got, you've got Bernard Cribbins here fulfilling that role, but it, oh, Bernard's so wonderful. You know, you, you just, as soon as you see him, you, you can't stop smiling. And, and he, he can do the the comedy and he can do the drama and you know he, he is in the, the action scenes as well i i, I think the, the robo men thing you know it, it's really good i think he's a good foil again next to peter cushing you know in the same way that um roberta was in the first one it's kind of you know now it's the the doctor and tom roberta's still got you know, lots to do but i love the relationship between the two of them uh, at that beginning so you know he is he is great in this the robe the robo man design is 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 a million miles on from what they do on the television isn't it, yeah. it it's 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 the sort of functional and and it's it's, sleek, it, it's got a look that actually this this this, this is probably a bit you know this is a bit better although there's a hilarious moment when when, when doctor who opens the the radio thing on the side is oh, very, very, very advanced. <laughs> it's like a, it's, it's like a spring in a battery or something. He's like, oh, very advanced. <laughs> like opening it now and finding a AAA battery. <laughs> <laughs> he says very advanced. He built his own time machine in the back garden. Yeah. It's I wonder dope. if he's on the same road as Holly in Crime Traveler. There might be a whole run of sort of secret time machines and little little houses along there. Oh. It's, Won't be able to uh, pay for the electricity, will they? Um, <laughs> I mean, it, it did. I mean, the design of the. I mean, the. It, it, it's kind of like Star Wars before Star Wars, wasn't it? So the uniformed people marching up and down corridors in a spaceship, it, and and you've got there's like that theme as well. Every time I think of the Robo Men, I hear the do 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 do. You know that sort of theme in my head as well. It's very it's very memorable of the the film probably you know just as memorable as the technicolor daleks last time it was like wow look at the technicolor daleks this time it's like well we've got technicolor da daleks but look at the shiny people <laughs> shiny rainbow men as well uh yeah. when they find that one in the warehouse and it's you know the, the one that's already dead it's quite you know it's quite like oh although um, strangely do you I don't know whether it was just me fans. Even though it's David Graham and Peter Hawkins doing the Dalek voices in both films, they both seem to be quite slow and sort of struggling. Well, not str but it feels a bit laboured, the voices, whereas it's a bit more punchy on television. So I don't know whether that's a conscientious thing of we've got to make it impact. But I know the first one was something to do with covering up bits of the flashing lights and Light. covering when they should be mm. flashing off. But they'd ironed all that out, but it still feels a little bit mm. on we this one that the, the voices, you're kind of willing them through certain sentences you know ah. you, you saw sort of wonder whether this was a a, 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 a a something that was needed for the film because obviously again this is based around the daleks and the dalek timings in the in the light in the sort of tv versions they are you're right fast slow fast slow there's differences but you just wonder whether there was a conscious decision to slow the dalek dialogue down so that you got essentially more dalek dialogue or longer dialogue mm -hmm. or you know, just to help the pacing of the film. I appreciate it slows the pacing down, but I think it's, I wonder if it was deliberately done. Possibly. Who knows? Mm. This is one of those things we will not know. Of course, what we'll do, we'll get another re-release of this at some point, and of course they'll whiz Nick Briggs in to do all the, uh, the re-dub of the Daleks. We'll get the Blu-ray version with a behind the sofa special and... Um, Ray Brooks is also very good in this as well, I think, and um, and and acts. I think he, he, you know, again brings a. He's he's again he's he's almost treated almost as top bill, but um, 
you know, I've always, I've always liked Ray Brooks as an, an actor um, through the various things I've seen him in on TV. Um, but again, I think he gives a, he, he passes off a very, um, a, a very sort of good contribution in this, I think. It's interesting because I don't know whether in some ways the, the, because there's a lot of star building on that, whether, whether it would have been better to cut even more on the character front because that sort of buying for, because that part is essentially, it's really weird, isn't it? Because some of them do certain bits of other people's things, don't they? So mm -hmm. David Campbell is why we've got Tom Campbell, but Tom isn't David. Mm -hmm. But Ray Brooks is sort of David, yeah. but he's also sort of Andrew Keir's part in the, mm -hmm. the, 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 so some of them share things and I mm. but David Whittaker did both films sort of uncredited I don't I think he might be credited with the second but he definitely worked on the first one as well but uncredited um so it's, it's interesting that he's he's there sort of sort of guiding this through really as a, as a probably the only real direct link from the actual tv series um I suspect they needed someone who knew how to make the Dalek scripts function and, and the nation was I've got my 500, I'll, I'll see you when it's at the cinema, loves. Um, <laughs> if Terry had sent the script in, it would have been 10 minutes long. It would have been the same as the previous one. <laughs> been a sketchy as Master Plan, it got a 10 from James. <laughs> oh, it's all he's right. All, he's it's gone all, right. all quiet, hasn't he? Gone all quiet, because he... He thought we were talking about porridge tonight and his, his cosplay <laughs> for Fletcher and everything. I'm cosplaying as Cremins. I was hoping you'd have Jill Curzon's little Sherlock Holmes get up on. <laughs> I couldn't fit him with the BBC cat suit, so I decided to go something low key. <laughs> and no wonky helmet. No. Oh, Jason, quick, quick with your helmet chat. <laughs> Always one, though, is the time. There is always one, yes. <laughs> Do we have any exotic facts on Doctor Who and the Daleks invasion, Earth 2150 AD? Uh, no, we've covered everything. I, the only thing was, I know we talked about this in the previous recording, so obviously they, they sold the rights to three Dalek stories. And there was a lot of speculation that they were going to do, the third film was going to be based on the chase. And then there was apparently quite some time ago, there was like a fan made trailer, which was called uh, Daleks versus Mechons, which was supposed to sort of like say, well, this is what they were planning to do for the third film, but it was all a myth. It was, it was all just like speculation um, from, from fans. But yeah, so they never, decided what that third film would look like and then as we were saying based sadly on, on the overall performance of this they were like no why are you shaking your head there James <laughs> no, I'm merely just shaking my head in the wonderment of the story there it is one of those myths though isn't it and there's not really any supporting documentation to cover no, this up or to, to actually cover this off in any way hmm. that's what I'm saying it's a myth hmm. But it's an I interesting myth. I checked myself and said, this yeah. is a myth before yeah. I said it. Yeah. But it's an interesting one because I think it probably would have been the chase that they'd, they'd gone to a third one. It would have made sense, um, particularly given the, um, it would have it would have fitted a movie format quite well because you know all those sort of different locations. And, you know, I think the kind of movie goer, the Saturday morning sort of movie goer type audience that this was being aimed at probably would have enjoyed that. They could have waited a bit longer and they could have had master plan. Or we could even have had big film quarks. Now, just imagine that. I'm still holding out one day. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, if people do, um, uh, Kevin Davies did a great documentary that's, it was on Talking Pictures, I think, last week. It was. Um, and it's, I think it's an extra on the first set, mm. maybe. Dalek Mania, anyway, because it, it, he does a fantastic 30 years, more than 30 years, and Dalek Mania sort of came off the back of all that, and that's a, a great documentary, so it's nice to have it, and, and also at a time when people talk about it, really. Um, mm. you know, this, is, nice this is the new, new jobby, isn't it? This is the, the, new, the new Who version. 
I genuinely do, do worry about the, the art on these. I mean, look at that, folks. <laughs> not because it's bad art. No, I'm not bitching on the art here. I just think, I mean, which one's which? Which one's which? Have you got the expensive one, Jason? Have I got Jason. the expensive one? Yeah, yes. you've got the... Sorry, did you just ask if Jason got more money than cents? <laughs> I have the slightly more with the limited edition coin in it. <laughs> How do you know it's the coin's in it, Jason? Because it's sealed. Well, yes, it is sealed because I'm rattled. keeping them sealed. As I said in the previous recording, um, I'm going to keep these sealed for a little bit longer yet. It's been three months since the last recording, Jason, and you still haven't unsealed the boxes. <laughs> No, well, you know, I've got, I've got, I've got willpower here. I can, you know, I can get. No, no, whoa, 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 Jason, you, you cannot say you've got willpower. What? <laughs> we won't go there. We're we're going to dive right around the side of that. You know that you know that twenty one fifty is just part of the title. It's not, you know, the date you're allowed to open it. <laughs> it's Jason's playing age twenty one fifty. On certain apps. Oh. Mm -hmm. Lee said. <laughs> Lee said on that. It is. It is interesting though that they they do as regular as clockwork, don't they? It must be every three years or something. They get they get a reissue, don't they? Mm. Whether we want it or not. Um, but I think this this is the first time in a while that they've actually gone full on to to mm. to clean it. Yeah. Maybe over clean it. I don't know. I don't know where I, where where we stand on on on, on that. Yeah, it's like all these. It's like all these sort of films. I mean, they they um, they they did the Lady Killers, and I I think it's again, it's one of those where they've cleaned it up too much, um, and they almost add, they almost oversaturate the color into that one. Whereas these ones, I think, have been done okay. I think this is a, I think these are a fairly sympathetic, um, uh, rejuvenations of the film prints. I think, and and you know. I think sometimes it works. It's great to have crystal clean prints of all these things, but sometimes they can be just a bit too clean, and that's not even how they were shown in the first place. Well, they're not. It's difficult, isn't it? Because you can remaster it because it's shot in the definition that it can be 4K, but it wasn't shot to be seen in the definition that is 4K. So difficult, difficult to the core. But it's a good selling feature. It is, and if you if you put a cheap coin and a folded poster in it, people will pay fifty quid for it. Indeed, but I also think that I'm gossing over that. I also think that um, having an opportunity for it to get a, uh, albeit limited, but it got a nationwide release, and both films seen back in the cinema again for the first time in many years. And I I think that was quite I think that was quite nice to have the films come back round and and have an opportunity to see them. It wasn't just London centric at the BFI. It 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 got cause you know it got sort of taken around the country, which they do nice. they do get shown fairly regularly at different cinemas. I don't mm -hmm. I don't know if it's been that long since since Crikey, we showed it in Sheffield about five years ago. So mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think it's <laughs> I don't think it's that that right. It's nice, I think, to be able to see it in the context that it's yeah. it's intended. Yeah. I, mean, I think that's, that's what I'm, the, yeah. That's, that's what you mean. Is that what you meant, my darling? Is that yes, what you that meant? That is indeed what that is indeed what I meant to see it in it. It's, it's restored it, glory on the big screen, and it's full uh, widescreen technicolor. Yeah, with completely. Yeah, Jason, Jason, you should see it on the big screen in its full intended glory. Don't pay a hundred pounds and have it sealed on your shelf. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I keep a straight face, honestly. Uh, anyway, do we? We've done the facts, so is it time to score? Yeah. Okay, which one of your queens is going first? I know you both got. It's like it's like <laughs> one of you's gonna say something. One of you's gonna have to say All right, something. I'll here. go. I'll go first. Um, Dalek Invasion of Earth, twenty one fifty AD. Bigger budget, a little bit more ambition. Um, a fantastic Dalek saucer. And I think a great second film um, if, of, of the two. Um, okay, maybe not as, as we've said in the recording, not maybe as well received as the, as the first one, but I think this is a nice step on from the, from the first film. Um, I think it's nice to, you know, I've said already, it's nice to have it sort of in an earth location. Um, 
it's a condensed version of what we would have seen on the TV. And I think they 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 use the budget wisely. So you get some great you get some great um, stage H at Shepperton um, sort of studio sets, um, bit of location work, and you get the iconic Dalek scene of the Dalek coming out of the uh, out of the Thames. Um, all in all, I think this is um, it's it's a Great film, and I think it's slightly better than the first one. So I'm going to be going in there with um, eight. Just an eight. There's not any specific type of eight that you're adding to that. Eight. Yeah, no, no, that's what you said. <laughs> it's just like you have your solid seven. So I was questioning whether there was a type of eight, not not like a hearing issue. Um. No, I think it's just a straightforward eight. Straightforward eight. Straightforward eight. Okay. <laughs> I want to see what you're going to say. It's slightly better than the last one. Six and a half. <laughs> <laughs> now you know my logic. My scores. Now you know my logic sometimes can do that, but I'm leaving <laughs> that opportunity for you to come in a half above or below me now, James, because I want to just give you that great Ooh, opportunity. Shame. <laughs> Oh, there was no romance in the end of this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a five. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> despite what we've said about it, I, I think it's unfortunate that the, the, the cleanup has revealed a few things. That doesn't detract for me but I think there is a question as to how far do you go with you know cleaning things up and enhancing them if it starts to show some of the flaws like that and you know, I think we've talked about that when you know things have been converted in, in HD and you start to see the scuffs on the floor and it's the little things that you wouldn't necessarily have seen the, the first time round, I, I still think though that the the, the ship itself, the modelling, it is is beautiful, and it, it's probably I have to say my favourite Dalek ship of of all of the uh, different ones that have gone over the years. Um, it's a just a lovely, beautiful model. Um, yes, there is some some changes, Lu Louisa um, as the niece, um, but you know again. You, you enjoy the story for what it is. It's a slightly different retelling of what it was before. It does come back bigger. It does come back on a better budget. It comes back with more ambition, like you say. And you've got that sort of climactic thing at the, the mine at the end, which, you know, is, is kind of almost Bond-esque, you know, at the end where you've got the big base, which is blown up. So, um, yeah, I enjoyed it. And I don't want to give it 0.5 more than what you gave it, but I did score it. I did score it. Eight and a half. Play nicely, children, play nicely. You don't get the, the, the spaceship like that, do you, that, that you get in the, in, the, in the TV version where it's like... <laughs> it's, like it's, uh, it's only on one string. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's, just, it's funny because because that Dalek scene, the Dalek coming out, I will get to my score. Uh, the Dalek coming out of the river is an iconic um, image. What the poop is he doing under the water? What's he doing? <laughs> There's never any reason for that Dalek to be just just bobbing about at the bottom of the Thames, <laughs> is there? I mean, is is he is he looking for gold? Is he looking? At, what's he doing under there? They're just everywhere. Just anyway, it's sad. Um, yeah, it, it, it is, it is, it is a lot. It's not, you know, it's, it's a step up from the last one. It's bright, it's fun. Um, I gave it an eight. Oh, hey, See? so that gives Dalek's Invasion Earth 2150 AD 24 and a half points, which. Ooh. Means of the two movies, this is our preferred choice. I would agree with that. Yeah. Well, because you, you, you scored it more than the last one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I'm agreeing with it. 
We, we all scored it more than the last one. So we can all be in agreement on this. <sighs> oh. It's all right, Jay. I'm going to come around and just rip the cellophane off your sets. Just like, oh. <laughs> no, not going to happen. You'll, you'll wake up one morning and all the boxes will be open. Well, the cellophane might have to come off if we hit Roberta to one of the events, because I'll need it signing at some point. <laughs> the, the, the cellophane will come off. I'm going to push the, the dialect coin into the Tesco pay yourself machines <laughs> see what see how much it comes up for <laughs> 50 pence inserted oh all right <laughs> well i am going to delve in i'm actually oh look look there's a there's, ooh, there's, a, there's a raspberry mm. so i shouldn't perhaps have just put that straight in my mouth but i am gonna have that now mm. it can mix um thank you very much guys uh, yes, you. indeed. Oh, we were, didn't know where we were going there with that. James, do you want to do it again? <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you still got the camera. There we go. Hello. You know what I'm like when I get the camera. Pleasure as always, folks. Gosh, at the time it took them to keep moaning about who got the camera, I found a piece of fudge. That's how long they were rabbiting on there. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.